Mario Maker Degenerates, welcome. This is a presentation of the longest passcode level, a level I made that requires a code 1880 binary digits long. The code is at the end and timestamps are in the description. Though, there's nothing of value in this video, it's a complete waste of time, so the only timestamp you need is the one pointing to the end of the video. Previously, on this particular waste of time, our unfortunate chapter in human history opens with a certain Pangea Panga level. Cybersecurity 101 Brute Force. This misappropriation of level building materials aims to test the skill, wits, and guile of the player by requiring an entry of two randomly selected eight digit numbers. To be clear, there are no hints, there is no puzzle. It's just a test whether you know the code. To enter the code, the player travels along the different inputs, triggering a number of power blocks in each row. Bullet blasters of different heights sit on top of these stacks of power blocks, and when brought to an exact level, they allow a platform to carry another power block from the top of the stack to a store at the end of the level. If, and only if, all the blasters were brought to the exactly correct level, these blocks create a ledge for a bob -omb which unlocks the path. Of course, I know what you're thinking. Two arbitrary eight-digit numbers is worse odds than winning the lottery. But people have won the lottery. If someone won this lottery, they might actually find it fun. Do you really want people to have fun when playing your levels? Panga's second level rectifies this issue. In cybersecurity, two, one, brute force. Instead of a stack of power blocks, the bullet blasters are dropped onto a stack of brick block shaped coins. In this level, the height of the bullet blasters is verified with this mushroom shaped scanning device that travels over the top of the level only if the tops of all bullet blasters are perfectly even. If the mushroom-shaped scanning device reaches the end, the scan is successful and a key is collected. If it does not, you die. Remember this part, we're going to innovate. This much larger level has space to encode not a few hundred million potential passcodes, but 904 Trevengentillion. More precisely, this number is 8 to the 83rd power because there are 83 base 8 digits. A programmer might say instead that there are 249 bits of security, since each base 8 digit is equivalent to 3 base 2 digits. This is already a comparable state space to many cryptographic algorithms, like SHA-256. Over on Reddit, the mysteriously named Anonymo5 frog presented an optimized setup. I quote, Based off of Pangea Panga's level, but that had 8 to the 83rd power, or 948 trevengentillion possible outcomes. Mine has 10 to the 88 power, or 10 octavengentillion possible outcomes. To put that into perspective, I added 11 trillion times more possible outcomes, or 11 trillion, 54 billion, 295 million, 750,520.9 times more to be exact. Or contraire, and Nemo 5 frog, that is almost one part in quadrillion off from exactness. However, this is what caught my eye, and it's why I made this video. I see a pointless number going up, and I think, boy, wouldn't it be nice if that number was a larger number instead? I realize a claim like that is liable to alienate a substantial fraction of the viewers of a video like this, but rest assured, Unlike these previous two levels, not a single coin is collected in mine. So, the longest passcode level, 863 Vigintillion Google 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 possibilities. 1880 bits of security. The utter pinnacle of poor life choices. How did I do it? Well, it's actually surprising. Consider these two brick blocks. They look pretty similar, do they not? Yet, as you all know, this illusion can be quickly dispelled with a gentle tap of the head. And yes, if he were punching the bricks, he would use gauntlets, not helmets. I rest my case. By outfitting our crafty plumber with such a helmet of the spiky variety, we prevent him from discovering which block is which, while still allowing him to interact with the blocks. To use these blocks to encode a password, we make use of two remaining differences. 
The first property is that only standard blocks turn into coins when a P-switch is activated. The second property is that after being destroyed, standard blocks never come back, but blocks containing vines will respawn whenever the area is re-entered. Well done, Mario. To show how to turn these insights into a full passcode level, let's enlist our trusty Toadette to walk us through the process. First, Toadette carefully destroys only the vine blocks and nothing else. Having entered the passcode, she drops down onto the P-switch to start the check. At this point, two things are activated. To Toadette's right, a power block is dropped down, allowing the green door to be used for later. Above Toadette, the mushroom-shaped scanning device falls down and travels along the semi-solid, through the path of the brick blocks. Because only the coins remain, the mushroom-shaped scanning device reaches the end, moving the seesaw out of the way just in time to open the path for a buzzy beetle. This buzzy beetle in turn pushes another seesaw, which lifts up a bob -omb. We then crush the bob -omb, and the raised bob -omb destroys the upper tile. We destroy the bob -omb with a snake block and a bullet blaster to avoid giving out any light or timing information, either of which could allow a careful player to deduce the password. At this point, Toadette can use the door, starting the second phase of verification. When Toadette re-enters the room, the destroyed vine-containing brick blocks are miraculously repaired. This time, the mushroom-shaped scanning device travels over the top of the brick blocks and again reaches the end. As before, this moves the seesaw out of the way of the buzzy beetle, and the buzzy beetle raised the bomb arm. This time though, a key-holding piranha plant has entered the bomb arm's quarters. Previously, the piranha plant was spawn blocked, but during the last scan, the block that took its place was destroyed. So this time, when Toadette crushes the bob -omb, the bob -omb can destroy the piranha plant and retrieve the key. Marvelously done, Toadette. It may help to see the attempts of two less informed adventurers. Our first, Mario, is too lazy to destroy any bricks. He immediately jumps down to activate the P-switch, but the mushroom-shaped scanning device gets stuck and cannot reach the saw. The buzzy beetle is then unable to pass, and so does not lift up the bob -omb, leaving it to explode uselessly, only destroying the lower decoy brick. On the upside, Mario's second scan does go as planned, since none of the standard brick blocks were destroyed, but since the key holding piranha plant is still spawn blocked, Mario receives no key, and is unable to complete the level. Our second failure correctly decides to destroy all the vine blocks, but recklessly destroys some coin blocks in the process. His first pass through the level is successful, the mushroom-shaped scanning device travels to the end, the buzzy beetle lifts the bomb, and the key-holding piranha plant is liberated. But when Luigi travels through the door for the second scan, oh no, the mushroom-shaped scanning device falls into a hole where a coin block had been destroyed. Once again, the buzzy beetle gets stuck, and now the bob -omb remains unable to reach the piranha plant and liberate the key. Despite his early success, our green-suited plumber friend just doesn't have what it takes to complete this level. A few more considerations were required for the full level. In it, a large Monty Mole is released when the first P-switch is activated, and periodically refreshes the P-switch timer until the scan ends. When the P-switch is not activated, the Monty Mole stays at the start of the level instead. The final snake block is a slow snake block to prevent rushing ahead of the mushrooms, and an indication is given whenever a snake block ends, because falling off one sucks. At the end of the track, there's a normally spawn-blocked mushroom that's destroyed when the P-switch ends, to hide the sound that would be made if the mushroom-shaped scanning device is also destroyed. The on-off block is used through this mechanism, which can only be activated once, preventing misuse. Here's a bird's eye view of the whole level. Many of you might notice an issue with this clip. Only the bottom four rows actually have any vine blocks. 
Now, before you all get up in arms at how there are only actually 752 bits of security here, let me say this. The level supports all 1,880 bits of security. And if you're inhumanly fast and accurate, it's probably possible to enter all 1,880 binary digits. Alas, I am only human, and I cannot enter that many. In fact, entering a mere four rows of binary digits already required me to write a program for assistance. Let's take a look. Though I'll spare you the details about the program itself. Just take a moment to appreciate that this drones on for literally five minutes, and that you can't make a single mistake when transcribing this, since every mistake is irreversible. With that said... One. 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 One.